Welcome to the Sharp Aquas Board Pen Software version 2.4 demonstration. Let's begin by discussing how we can customize the toolbar. So something that is new on the version 2.4 software is that we have the ability to go in and customize our toolbar by choosing the settings icon, customize toolbar, and what we can do is we can go in and make the toolbar either floating or docked. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to make the toolbar floating. And what that's going to give us the ability to do is to move it around the screen where we see fit. The next thing I can do is I can choose to add or remove certain icons depending upon what functions or features I'm going to be looking for while working with my documents. I have it set up the way that I want it right now, but if I wanted to have something appear on the toolbar that didn't at this moment, I simply select it, I choose Add, and then I would select Apply and OK. So now that I've customized my toolbar, it appears up here on the left-hand side of my screen. What I can do is I can take this top icon up here, which is going to give me the ability to rotate this toolbar so that it can either appear horizontal or vertical on my screen. What I did just before was I made it floating as well. So if you want to move the toolbar around the screen, you simply select right in the center and you would click and drag. And once you remove your finger from the screen, that's where your toolbar is going to be. So I'm going to move it up to the left-hand side of the screen right now. The next thing that I want to show you is the new touch panel that is at the bottom of the screen. And this has 10 of your common features that you would use. So the pens, the eraser, saving a document, opening a document, so on and so forth. It also has two USB ports, one on each side, which allows you easy access for when you want to be able to import or upload documents to the computer. So for demonstration purposes, we're going to use an architectural drawing that I've already set up. I have to just import it into the pen software first. So what I want to do is I want to select the icon that will allow me to import the image. And now my drawing appears. So the next icon that I'm going to show you is called the figure pen. What this is going to give me the ability to do is anytime I draw a square, a circle, an X, it's going to take that image for me and perfect it. So here is the figure pen. If I select that icon, and then let's just say I want to highlight this storage area. So I decide I want to draw a square around it the figure pen will perfect that image for me. So you have a nice polished, clean looking document. The next thing that I'll show you is called the input text icon. And that's this one down here on the lower right hand side. What I need to do now is pick a starting point on the Sharp Aquos board. So I place my pen on the screen and I drag. And what this does, it now brings up a text box. It'll allow me to configure that text however I'd like it. And it has my keyboard as well. So let's just say for demonstration purposes, I want to make a note and change the storage room to the laundry room. I simply type in laundry. And as you can see, that text starts to appear here. I can remove my keyboard. And now I can take my text and I can choose the font, which for this demonstration, the font that it's in right now is fine, but I want to make it a little bit smaller. So I use the drop down menu. I make the font smaller. I'm going to make it bold and I'm going to place it in red. I can now remove my X and I can make this box a little bit smaller. And now what I want to do is I want to take this image and move it down so that it appears next to the square. So now that I have my square drawn and I input the text, what I want to do is I want to use the line arrow icon. What that's going to give me the ability to do, and it's this one right here on the lower left hand side, is once I place my pen on the Sharp Aquos board and I drag it to the right, it's actually going to create that arrow for me. However, right now that arrow is a little bit too small for what I'm looking for. So, the Aquos board allows me to choose how thin or thick I want that arrow to appear, and I can also change the color as well. 
So let's make it a little bit thicker. Select OK. And now what I can do is I can remove the last arrow that I drew, place my pen on the screen again, drag it to the right, and now I have the arrow that I want to appear on my drawing. So what I want to do is I want to take that text box and move it over slightly to the left so that the arrow is actually pointing towards the area that I'm looking to illuminate. I can do the same thing with that arrow, drag it right up here so that it's right alongside of the laundry. And now this will indicate to whomever's reading this document that I would like a laundry room to replace the storage room. Another great option if I'm looking to write something on the document like the date freehand instead of using the new text icon is that if there's a, an area within the document that has fine detail, what I want to do is pan into that area. So I want to zoom in. I'm going to want to scroll over. And once I see the portion of the document that I'd like to make that change to or that annotation, now using my pen, I can go ahead and let's just say for demonstration purposes, I write in the date on here. So now that I've written in the date, when I go ahead and I zoom out or pan out, it's going to take the information that I've written in there, the date, and it's going to shrink it so that it fits the original size of the document. Now let's take a look at something else. If I want to import an image, there are two different ways I can do it. I can use this icon over here on the left hand side of the screen and once I select it, it will give me the option to either insert an image file that I already have that is existing within my computer system or I can do a screen capture just as you would on your computer. So I'll show you how to do the screen capture for now and then we'll come back to importing an image. Once I select screen capture, it's going to bring me back to my desktop. Now it's going to give me two options. I can either capture the entire screen or just the portion that I select. So I want to capture this baseball diamond. Once I select capture selection, now I can go ahead and place my pen on the screen and once I drag that pen all the way over to the right until I found the section of the document or the section of the computer and I release the pen, I select paste to this sheet. Once I do that, it takes the image and it'll now import it into my document. Once the baseball diamond is in the document, now if I'm a coach and I'm discussing plays with my players, I can come in and use the drawing object icon, which is new. And what that will allow me to do is place a repeated object on the screen. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I select a drawing object. If I select it again, we have this box that appears. Now these are my choices. So let's just say I want to use squares and I know that I'm going to use them repeatedly. I'm going to leave it in blue, although I have a color palette here that allows me to configure what I want my square to look like. I can either fill the inside color. For this demonstration, I'm going to leave it blank. Then I can choose the thickness for the lines of the square. I'll place it on the medium thickness. Once I select OK, now any time that I have the drawing object icon selected and I take my pen or my finger and I place it on the screen and I drag, it's going to create that square for me. So now what I want to do as the coach is institute a shift. I have my square on the screen. The next thing that I want to do is I want to move the third baseman all the way over to the right to second base. So once I go ahead and take my pen again and place it on the screen and drag it to the right, it's going to create that square for me again. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to display the shift. So I can do it one of two ways. I can either use the pens and create my own arrow 
not worried about what the line looks like. Or I can use the figure pen icon, which I showed you before. And what that's going to do, again, is it's going to perfect that arrow for me. All right, so now that I have showed you a couple different things, I captured the image first, but I said that there was another way in which we could import an image. So let's just say, and I'll use a clean sheet to show you this. Let's just say that I wanted to import that baseball diamond, but I wasn't using a screen capture. I could use this icon over here again, which allows me to insert an image file. So instead of me having to go open up a file and then import it into the software, I now very simply and easily, which is time saving, can select insert image. It's going to bring up my available options. I can choose the option that I'm looking for, select open, and there's my baseball diamond once again. Another cool new feature is the ability to highlight any object that I draw, even the baseball diamond, because it's an image, and use this blue square. So instead of clicking the black button on my pen or right-clicking on a mouse that you may be using, the blue square will give you a drop-down menu, which will now allow you to cut, copy, paste, rotate, all the same options that you would have once again, either selecting the black button or right-clicking on your mouse. It just makes it easier. So now we're in a boardroom and we're giving a presentation. One of the nice pieces about the new 2.4 software is that it's collaborative. What I mean by that is if we're taking a look at this Aquos board right now, and we had a satellite office, let's say in California, and we're doing a web conference, we can both be looking at the same images on the Sharp Aquos board at the same time, even though we're 2,500 miles apart. And we can also work, meaning the systems are still interactive, so whatever I draw on this board will be shown on that one in real time, and vice versa. The next thing that I'll show you is the split screen icon. That's this icon right over here. Once I select that, I had already imported one of my images, and now what the pen software is doing is it's actually splitting the screen right in half so that I can, let's say, show a comparison from opening fiscal 2011 to opening fiscal 2012 in comparison. Let's now discuss how we can either open a document or save a document. It's a little bit different than the previous version. So, if I take a look at my icons, let's say I'm looking to open a document. Once I select the icon on the upper left-hand side, as you can see, a menu appears and it gives me options. Now I can either open a new SWS file, which is the file format that you need in order to be able to use the pen software with a working document, or I can open a new file within the document that I'm already working in. So you have two different options there. Once I'm done making my annotations to that document, I now can save the file. Same thing here. So I select the icon on the right-hand side, and now I have three options available to me. I can either save as a new SWS file, I can go ahead and save that to the same file that I was working with, or I can change the entire thing and save this document as a PDF or an image file, a JPEG, a bitmap, or a PNG. So one thing that I want to highlight before we end is that in the previous version of the software, as well as the 2.4 version, we can now annotate PowerPoint documents without actually importing them into the Sharp Pen software. Once I have my PowerPoint on the screen, if I simply tap on the screen, this toolbar will appear. Now this is a floating toolbar as well, so I can go ahead and I can move it wherever I would like on the screen. And what it's going to give me the ability to do is advance from slide to slide. I can make my annotations using the pen. I can erase those annotations. I can go back into the pen software, and then I can exit out of the presentation mode. 
And that concludes the Sharp AquasBoard Pen Software version 2.4 demonstration. Thank you for joining us.